The subcommittee will come to order. I am very pleased to welcome everyone here today for the Subcommittee on Emerging Threats and Capabilities markup for the Fiscal Year 2019 National Defense Authorization Act. I would like to begin by thanking all of the members of the subcommittee for their contributions and enthusiastic participation in the hearings, briefings, and congressional delegations that we have held during the past several months. We have taken a deliberate, a deliberate look at some very significant issues within the subcommittee's purview, and we have done so in a united and bipartisan manner. I want to thank each of my colleagues on the subcommittee for their hard work and support. The Emerging Threats and Capabilities Subcommittee mark this year focuses on ensuring our technological superiority by providing the policies and programs that will energize our science and technology enterprise, infuse the department with a culture of innovation, strengthen our cyber warfare capabilities, safeguard our critical infrastructure, provide support for our special operations forces at home and abroad, provide resources and authorities to counter terrorism, and review in advance our preparedness to counter weapons of mass destruction. I'm especially proud of what the subcommittee has been able to achieve this year in reviewing and understanding adversarial threats, most notably from China and Russia, while also maintaining our focus on emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence, directed energy, hypersonics, synthetic biology, and robotics. Our emphasis on science and technology carries two broad themes. First, the MARC better organizes the Department of Defense to oversee, accelerate, and integrate artificial intelligence and machine learning across the defense enterprise. The MARC will establish an AI policy and oversight council and conduct a thorough review of the wide-ranging military applications of this decisive technology. These provisions carry many of the themes of the standalone artificial intelligence legislation, H.R. 5356, that would establish a national security Security Commission on Artificial Intelligence, a bill introduced by myself and co-sponsored by Ranking Member Langevin and several members of the subcommittee. Second, the MARC builds upon previous NDAAs and advances prototyping and testing of directed energy weapons and hypersonic vehicles and accelerates the operational employment of these technologies. These steps will ensure our competitive advantage against near-peer and peer adversaries and maintain our superiority in these fields. In addition to the science and technology provisions, the MARC strengthens our whole of government cybersecurity posture by establishing a pilot program that allows for improved coordination between the Departments of Defense and Homeland Security to prevent and respond to cyber attacks against our critical infrastructure. The MARC also reinforces international partnerships in cyber warfare to counter aggressive adversaries such as Russia, China, and North Korea. This includes support for our NATO partners to enhance partner cyber capabilities and information sharing. The MARC also recommends fully resourcing U.S. Cyber Command and service cyber programs and activities and tightening the Department of Defense requirement to notify Congress in the event of cyber intrusions that expose the personal information of our service members. The mark before our members today also authorizes U.S. Special Operations Command's programs and activities, including ongoing efforts in Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan, Yemen, Somalia, and Eastern Europe. We extend authority for critical personnel recovery programs and strengthen congressional oversight of ongoing counterterrorism and sensitive activities. The MARC will also streamline the department's oversight of countering weapons of mass destruction by creating a single principal advisor to the Secretary of Defense for these activities. To build upon the success of family support and mental and behavioral health programs within U.S. Special Operations Command, which this subcommittee has championed in previous years, we are encouraging the Department of Defense to examine how the most successful elements of this program can be scaled to the broader force to ensure our service members and their families are receiving the best care possible. We're also directing the secretary to review professionalism and ethics programs across the special operations forces to better understand any impact from the very high op tempo after ne nearly 17 years of war. We recognize much of this burden has been carried by our soft warriors. Before moving along, I want to thank um, the ranking member, member, Congressman Jim Langevin of Rhode Island. Jim, it's been a true honor to work with you in such a bipartisan fashion, and I look forward to continuing these efforts together as we move towards full committee. I also want to take this moment to thank the committee staff who have worked so hard on this mark with each of our offices, including staff lead Peter Villano, 
professional staff members Eric Snellgrove, Katie Sutton, Lindsay Cavanaugh, and Jamie Jackson, our clerk Nevada Shadler, and our fellow Dr. Mark Peppel. Thank you so much for all of your hard work leading up to this subcommittee, Mark.